Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station. I'm Wesley from Google Cloud, joined by Martin and Porter the Train to help you modernize your apps and use the latest features from Serverless. Happy to be here again, Wes. What are we doing today? In this module, we're covering App Engine Blob Store, a handy service managing file uploads and downloads for your apps. Porter will take you on a journey adding Blob Store to a sample app, then migrate it to cloud storage next time. Well, just like the other migrations we've covered, while Porter does help users get from point A to point B, we need to first take a detour to reacquaint folks with App Engine Blob Store, so this video won't feature any migrating at all. You've done it again, Wes. More non-migration content in a migration video series? Why? Yeah, the current sample app doesn't use Blob Store, so let's add its usage to the Module 0 baseline app and then migrate it to cloud storage ahead in Module 16. That makes sense. Tell me more. Well, we're going to begin with the Module 0 baseline app, the original baseline app for all of our migrations. Mm, uh, I've done some of these migrations with you already, uh, but we typically start from the Module 1 app, where we've already migrated frameworks from Web App 2 to Flask. Why are we starting with Module 0, uh, which is still using Web App? Great observation. Not only do we have to start with Web App 2, but Blobster even has a dependency on Web App, App Engine's original framework when it launched. Don't worry, though. When we swap out Blobster with Cloud Storage in Module 16, we'll also move to Flask at the same time. Mm, sounds good. Uh, now, this migration appears to be uh, all Python 2. Uh, what about Python 3 developers? Good question. Unfortunately, neither Web App nor Web App 2 are supported by the Python 3 runtime. Once you migrate to another framework and add App Engine's Python 3 support for bundled services, then you can stay on Blob Store. Oh, so you mean it's possible to have a Python 3 Flask app using Blob Store? Yes. Using bundled services like Blob Store or Memcache in second generation App Engine runtimes is covered in Module 17. The goal of this Module 15 video is to add use of Blob Store, paving the way for the Module 16 migration to cloud storage. OK, so I get we're adding Blob Store today. Earlier, you said we're migrating from Blob Store to cloud storage plus web app to Flask. What else are we going to do in uh, Module 16? Well, in that next video, we're going to do a total of four migrations. You already pointed out Blob Store to Cloud Storage, Web App 2 to Flask, but we're also repeating the Module 2 migration from App Engine NDB to Cloud NDB. And finally, we're upgrading to Python 3. In fact, the Module 16 app is both Python 2 and 3 compatible. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, back on today's topic, uh, what Blob Store usage are we adding to the sample app? Yeah, currently the app registers all visits upon page load. But we're updating it to ask users to associate an artifact, like a picture, with a visit. Users can either upload one or click Skip. After that, they get to the most recent visit page just like normal. Future visitors will see links for all recent visits with files and can click to view if desired. OK, I have to be honest. I haven't used App Engine Blob Store before. Uh, can I implement it myself while you're showing us on screen? Sure thing. Clone the repo or download its zip file and go to the Module 0 folder, as that's where we'll start. If you want to do this by hand with me now or on your own time, follow the Module 15 code lab. Links to both are down below. So let's go to the computer now and do this. Module 0 was a long time ago, so let's ensure that that baseline app still works. Get the code from the repo. It should just have these three files you see here. Then use gcloud app deploy to upload to App Engine. Once you confirm it works, meaning it registers your visit and shows the 10 most recent visits, we can add some functionality to support the Blob Store service. Module 0 uses the Web App 2 framework that comes with App Engine, which uses the default Django templating system. To bring our port to Flask, we're swapping in the Jinja 2 templating system instead, but we're staying on Web App for now because Blob Store depends on it. Update the app.yaml config file to reference the built-in version of Jinja 2. Note, this is not its latest version, but the latest available on Python 2 App Engine servers. The code lab has more info, but it suffices to say just add these lines for now. Next, let's update the imports by adding Jinja 2, Blob Store, and the web app handlers for Blob Store. Because we're now using Jinja 2, we can remove the Django template import from web app. Since it's not the default templating system, we need to add a new base handler to help rendering templates. So add this class and its pair of methods. Our app will support Blob Store uploads, so we need a new property in our data model to reflect the uploaded file, calling it file blob. In store visits, we need to store the Blob Store key in file blob, so make that change. 
Finally, since the blob key is in the data store, it will be returned in any queries we make, so fetch visits stays the same. Scrolling down, the most significant changes take place in this part of main.py. To support file uploads as well as rendering uploaded files, we need new upload and download handlers for Blob Store. Regardless of whether the user uploads a file or clicks skip, it will post to slash upload and goes to the upload handler. The handler stores the visit info, including a blob key if a file was uploaded or none if not. It then reposts to slash, hence the HTTP 307 redirect. You web developers out there know that 302 and 303 change the request to get, so we need 307 because it preserves the verb. When users click the artifact link on most recent visits page, it issues a get request to slash view with the blob key. The view blob handler extracts the blob key and sends the blob down if it exists. In case someone tries to fetch something else by manipulating the URL or requests a blob that's no longer in Blob Store, a 404 is returned. The main handler needs to be updated for both uploads and downloads. For an initial GET request, we need to show the artifact upload form, so blobstore.createUpload.URL is used to call slash upload for the form response. On the other side, when the upload handler 307 reposts back to home, we fetch the most recent visits, including any artifact links, and render them in the template. Finally, the new routes for the upload and download handlers are added to the Web App 2 app instantiation. The application code is now updated, so we have to implement the same changes visually in the web template. In the first part of the template, we need to add the file upload form. The form action is the slash upload URL, and there's a regular submit button along with the skip button. The form is only shown if an upload URL is present. Otherwise, we show the most recent visits like before. The original part of the template rendering the most recent visits is updated to link to a visit artifact along with its blob key if present and none otherwise. Those are all the changes needed in the web template. The final step is to create a new templates folder and put index.html into it as that is Jinja2's preferred default. With all those changes made, upload to the cloud with gcloud app deploy and see how the app has changed. When hitting the in-app initially, instead of the most recent visits, you should see the file upload form. Upload something or click skip. Now you're brought to the familiar most recent visits page, but with one big difference. Visits with upload fe files feature a link to render that artifact. And that's it. You've now added use of Blob Store to your sample app. Congratulations. But hold on. Before rejoining Martin, there's one more thing. As cloud storage matured as a product, the goal was to migrate Blob Store there. One of the features to support this transition was to give developers the ability to specify a cloud storage bucket. You can see in the main handler how the call to create the Blob Store upload URL can take such a bucket name as an additional parameter. Since App Engine defaults to a bucket named after your app's default URL, you know, projectid.appspot.com, we use the App Identity API to explicitly use that same bucket name in the call. While that is the default, know that you can now change it if desired. OK, that's it. What do you think of Blob Store, Martin? Wow. Blob Store looks like a cool feature, and I like how in the last part you showed how it already integrates with cloud storage. Since I'm still new to Blob Store, are there any docs you can point me to? Of course. Start with the Blob Store overview. For specific details, also check out the Blob Store reference docs for Python 2 and 3, as well as accessing bundled services like Blob Store in Python 3. See the links in the description below. Very good. I'll take a look so I can be ready for the migration in module 16. Are there any docs I can review uh, to look ahead? Yes, to help plan for all those migrations in module 16, we've got links to the Cloud Storage Migration Guide, the docs for Cloud Storage itself, and a link to the module 16 code lab so you can get a head start before hitting the video. Great. I've got some stuff to read and try out before then. Thanks so much, Wes. Yes, and thank you for joining us on all these journeys to help you modernize your serverless apps. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we'll see you at the next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Till then, happy travels. Mm -hmm.